okay so So we have uh, till date what we have done we have discussed the unit number one and most of uh, our uh, the experimental techniques which we have done here they deal with the like electron diffract this uh, electron microscopy like scanning electron microscopy this uh, transmission electron microscopy and now what we are going to do that uh, starting this unit number two we would have uh, many other things which we have to take into account the basic or the fundamental idea will be the same first of all we would like to look at the um, the experimental setup and how to get the data from a particular type of uh, the instrumental setup that would be our main focus mm -hmm. so yeah we understand that we have our mst1 and i think you would have enough preparation of MST1 because most of the questions will be that multiple choice questions and you also would have a passage based question where one passage will be given and then follow up five questions will be there and you have to answer these questions on the basis of the information which is uh, given in the question title and the passage which is associated with it. So that the, this is the information which we have already circulated to all of the students and I hope that you are preparing well this time. Uh, now what we are going to do, I am going to pull up for the, let me pull out this, uh, the unit two uh, so that we can have a look at the syllabus of this unit two. So what we are going to do that we have to also discuss. No? So let's uh, have a look at uh, this so i'm sharing screen with you so that you can have an idea what we are going to uh, understand from here So with the help of this uh, presentation, uh, we have this unit two, and it is divided into two parts. No? The first part is uh, your the crystallography, and the second one will be the spectroscopic techniques one. So if you look into the detail of this uh, syllabus, in that case, uh, first of all, looking at the crystallography, most of the times we would be going for the electron diffraction. So if you look into the, the this uh, portion, most of this portion is related to the X-ray diffraction or electron diffraction. So first of all, we would like to uh, start with the lead. So this is also known as LED. This is called lead, which is low energy electron diffraction. And this is high energy electron uh, diffraction in this case. And after that, you would have neutron diffraction, X-ray diffraction. You might have heard about these law uh, rotating crystal and powder method. We would like to get them uh, briefly. And after that, what we will do that we will go for the analysis of the XRD data and then crystal structure determination. And then we would have this uh, small angle X-ray scattering, this, this topic. After that, uh, in the unit two, what you would have the electron spectro spectroscopy for chemical analysis. So we would like to come to the chemical analysis, number one. And then you would have the mass spectrometry and secondary ion mass spectroscopy. These are the topics which we would like to cover which is uh, one of the important technique which is which is known as the sims uh, measurements okay it is called sims measurements so secondary ion mass spectroscopy if you want to know about uh, the element elemental composition and type of the elements which are present in the 
material or the sample then you can do with that in this case so after that you have the important thing is FTIR Fourier transform uh, infrared spectroscopy so that uh, then you would have Raman and surface enhanced Raman spectroscopy these are the set of the topics which we would like to highlight in our unit 2 so overall if you look so we are going closer and closer to the point where we understand that what is the meaning of the experimental techniques in unit one we were having this scanning electron microscope and transmission electron microscope and then we were having this uh, the transducers after that uh, in the unit two so it is more like electron diffraction or x-ray diffraction and after that you would like to switch on to the electron spectroscopy for the chemical analysis so here you would have all the details which uh, we would like to come across so you have to see here that what we we have to do particularly in this case if you look into the FTIR then this is most important and most of the students those who are dealing with the material science or electronics or any other um, type of the experimental work they are doing in their research they use FTIR spectroscopy so we would be focusing so our main focus here would be the FTIR in this section and this is measurements and overall how to deal with the data that we would like to understand from here that is uh, the and the things which we have uh, from this uh, unit one and uh, unit two and if you would like to have a the look at the third unit in that case you can also have that the third unit so you it would be like your uh, the uv visible nir x-ray fluorescence okay we will take that stuff later okay so we would be talking about this uh, later okay so we will talk about this unit three uh, yeah, so it would be later we will talk about it. Okay, later we will talk about this unit uh, three. So, yes. So we have uh, this. Uh, let me pull out one of the sheet, which can we can share with and. Let's uh, try to draw the details here in this case. Okay. So what we would like to start today, okay, this would be very brief introduction about uh, this low energy electron diffraction. So. This is LEET. And today we would like to just simply discuss the experimental configuration. configuration. Of lead. So let's uh, have uh, this uh, discussion. This is the thing which we would like to have. Mm -hmm. So here, what we are uh, trying to do that um, in case of the lead, so what type of the electron diffraction you would have and uh, how you are going to understand that electron diffraction will be there that we have to take into account that uh, here the things which we, you you have the experimental configuration of this uh, lead so let's uh, have a view about that how does it work and what would be the experimental setup 
so the important component of the experimental setup would be like you would have an electron gun mm -hmm. electron gun yes. Okay, here you would have an electron gun and here you would have a viewpoint or electron detector or I can place it a little bit here. So here you would have um, this detail, we place the sample somewhere here, so let's uh, put the sample on And then from here, you would have your uh, electron vibration. Then these are uh, directed to the surface of the sample. And here you would have a um, couple of grids. Let me try it, how we can do it. And then we would have uh, another one. These are the grids which I am trying to draw here. Okay, so we have uh, here, you, you have your, the electron gun, let's uh, see that, this is your electron gun, electron gun, and uh, then this is uh, the fluorescent screen in this case, so you would have 
the fluorescent screen and here you would have your sample this is your uh, the sample so here, here it is uh, the sample and then here you would have a viewpoint here you would have viewpoint and here you would have an external detector okay so it is the viewpoint and then here you would have an external detector detector and what you do that uh, you would have this um, information from here let me do it so you would have variable supply and here you would have uh, this Okay, so we have uh, this, uh, let's say that So these are the two grids in this case. The grid, grid one and grid two. Grid two. <clears throat> grid one and grid two. No? So what are the main points here that we have to see? Okay, so the basic principle which we would have of the electron diffraction okay what is the basic principle if you look that is the electron diffraction and what are the conditions which are there for electron diffraction that we have to see what are the conditions who will tell us what are the important conditions for the diffraction electron diffraction yes who will tell us that what are the important conditions of electron diffraction that we have to look into What are the important uh, points of the electron diffraction that we have to understand? No? So it's important to understand that what are the why do we need to have and what is uh, the importance of the electron diffraction? Okay? So. So what, first of all, if you would like to have uh, for um, the primary requirements, so always discuss these, okay, not a new thing. What are the primary requirements 
primary requirements okay so your uh, the incident particles they should have primary requirement so what is this the incident particle that should have wave like nature okay? wave like nature okay? so you why wave like nature okay so that you what you do that um, the second thing which we would like to have once you have the wave like nature okay a wave like properties so scattered waves can superimpose coherently and thereby revealing the structure of the uh, scattering medium so that is the one thing and the second is that the lambda radiation should be of the same order of magnitude as the lattice constant okay so how to uh, to understand that okay the number one condition is that wave nature and secondly what you would have the lambda radiation okay lambda radiation which are incident let's say that in this case we have uh, the electron that should be of the order of uh, lattice constant okay? that should be of the order of uh, lattice constant no? and how you can uh, lattice constant so how you can control that in this case that you can control with the help of the energy which is uh, typical energies which uh, you are giving to the electron um, yeah the electrons in this case no? so if you would like to come to this point then what will happen that the energy energy of the incident electrons energy so there is some problem energy of incident electrons some problem with my pen or oh, that's why it is working like that you have to so some problem anyway here we can have the second one which is the white pole here it has less features but uh, the some problem with the yeah this problem with my slate so i think i cannot draw anything or okay i can i think there are some problems sometimes it would be the same irrespective of the slate or so the typical energy of the electron let me have a look at okay again i am going to share the screen if there is something wrong with it here yeah, again sharing this so energy of uh, the electron that should be about it would be like 20 to 200 electron volt mm -hmm. 200 electron volt okay. so that uh, when what will happen that when you would have the what are the important components here you need to have an electron gun and after that electron gun uh, the electrons they will hit the surface of the sample 
and from here you would have uh, scattering of the electrons okay? and uh, then you would have grid 1 and grid 2 we stop the inelastic um, scattering of the electrons and then they will be falling on the fluorescent screen and uh, the viewpoint which is here okay so you can from if you look at this screen then you would have the reflective viewpoint of the events which are there on the fluorescent screen okay? and uh, then uh, with the help of the electron the external detector you can have additional detection if you require to have okay so what what would be the simple setup that the simple uh, thing which you have that the electrons they will be incident uh, from the electron gun and then they will hit the sample and the only difference between the lead and RHEED which is a reflection high energy electron diffraction is that the energy of the electron that is uh, smaller in case of the lead okay and that is 220 to 200 electron volt so what will happen that in this case you would have um, the interaction of the electrons uh, with the sample in different ways in two experimental configurations. Okay. So that's uh, the simple thing you can have a look at uh, this uh, at your home and uh, in the meantime let's um, yes we would like to have uh, this thing. So let's uh, have a look at your preparation. How your preparation or So yes, <clears throat> how are your preparations? Yes. So yes, many students have not replied. Please reply. Okay, six students have not replied. Six students are here. Naresh, oh, Naresh has replied. Fire, Sapna has not replied. Uh, 
Ravinder Kumar Thakur has not replied. Sapna Kumari has not replied. Okay, so why it's not good? Ten student. So I think Abhinav is excellent. Abhinav's preparation is already excellent. So can you talk to us you now that why it is excellent? Abhinav, are you there? You can unmute and talk to me. I can share the responses with you. Yes, sir. Yes. So you are uh, you are excellent in your preparation, no? Yes, sir. Okay, so can you share something with us? Sir, bus chali gayi hai, matlab tayari ho rahi hai. Okay, so why do you th uh, think that your uh, preparations are excellent? Sir, motivation hai bus. Oh, chal rahi hai. Good. Okay. So, yes, that's good. And then the rest of not good. Uh, some students are not good. Why can you talk some of the students, those who are saying not good? Yes, why you are thinking it is not good? Okay, anyway, let's uh, pull out the questions. So let's have few questions. So we'll answer this question. Please answer this question. A diverging lens defocuses light, transmits light as such, focuses the light at one point, none.
Yeah, hurry up. All the students, they should reply. Yes, reply. Let me share the result. 15 students have not replied. Even if you don't know the answer, it does not matter. Reply anything. Reply anything. A right answer or wrong answer doesn't matter. Only problem is that you will be registered here so that we feel that you are active. Yes, please hurry up. I will share the responses with you. A diverging lens defocuses the light. That we have to see that okay, what, what will happen in case of the converging and diverging lenses, okay? Diverging lenses. So that uh, you have to see that. Hmm? So, is it uh, clear what happens in this case? So you would have, let's say that if you have a converging lens, no? Let's say that if you have a converging lens, this is called converging lens, no? Which is, uh, if you have the rays of light which, is, which are falling on this, Okay, so in that case, what will happen? This will be focused at one point. No? So these lenses are uh, used in case of uh, the optical microscope. No? If you have diverging lens, in that case, what will happen? If you have the rays of light, which is which are coming, so what will happen? You would have defocusing of the light which is there. Okay? It, it would be like you have defocusing of the light in this case. No? So you would have the option that um, okay. So let's um, have another look. Another question is the simple one. Somebody is speaking, or should I turn off the video if you want to speak? Raise hand, I can turn on your video, uh, this uh, audio. So, the next one we would like to have a simple one. So if you can see this, uh, the new one, can you pull up this? And uh, are you able to see this? The poll which is there? No, I think, can you cast your vote? No, it's, uh, okay, no problem. I will put it again. Okay, no problem. I'm terminating it and then we would have Linear equation. Equation. So you have simple question. Can you answer this? 
a plus bx plus cx squares is a linear equation, nonlinear equation, cannot say. No? Yes, so there are interesting posts. Five students have not replied. Aditi Thakur has not replied. Varun Jyot, you have not replied. Okay, so let me show you the responses. So we have uh, 21 students are saying linear equation, 29 students are saying non linear equation. So who will comment? Abhinav, can you comment on it? What it is? Okay, anyway, Abhinav is. Uh, okay, I have not enabled your voice. Or Ankur Thakur, can you speak to me? Ankur Thakur, here, Ankur Thakur, are you there? Ankur Thakur. Deepti, Deepti, can you unmute yourself and talk to me? Ashima Thakur, can you talk to me? Jyoti, Monarch, Pabanjot, want to talk? Pabanjot Singh Sani. Anyway, you can leave the session. I think time is okay. Okay, so if you have this uh, A, so you Y is equal to MX plus C is the linear equation linear okay m is the slope okay and if you and see the intercept this is the nonlinear equation this one is the nonlinear equation 